I've seen The Godfather over 40 times. Both parts. I've watched Parks and Rec, BoJack Horseman, and a bunch of other TV shows more times than I can remember. Now don't get me wrong, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, rewatching shit is fun. You can catch things you didn't see before, or share it with someone else, or just really take a deep dive into it and see why you love it and what exactly makes it so special. But let's be real here. You're probably not watching The Avengers for the 10th time to gain a deeper appreciation for the artistry. You're watching it because it's comforting. It's safe and familiar. And I get it, I've been there plenty of times, as I'm sure a lot of us have. You're sitting there, bored, looking for something to watch. Maybe you got a list of recommendations from friends, checking your DVD collection, or going through pirate <coughs> Netflix. And you scroll through, like, uh, seen it, seen it, seen it. Don't care, don't care, looks dumb. Oh, I've heard that's good. Oh, uh, th uh, th three hours, I, I, I don't know. Let's just watch The Godfather again. But The Godfather's also three hours. Ugh, shut up. Just let me stagnate my growth by temporarily avoiding any potential confrontation of the immeasurable well of misery that lies deep within me, suffocating my very being at every waking moment. God, is that really so much to ask? Ugh. And there is the difference between rewatching something because you actually want to, and rewatching it because it's easier and you're scared to watch something else. I bet we all know at least one person who seems like they exclusively watch The Office on repeat. Well, just finished The Office, I'm gonna watch The Office again, and then when I'm done with The Office again, I'm gonna watch The Office again, and it's like, damn. Bro, get a hobby. Like, The Office is great and all, but maybe he's thinking a different show once in a while. You know, your favorite TV show is not your spouse, you're not cheating on The Office by watching Parks and Rec. And when you're done with a different show, The Office will still be right there for you if you want to watch it again. But if you're already going to spend that much time watching TV, you might as well take advantage of all the unique experiences that it can offer to you. Like, sure, I've seen The Godfather 40 times, but I've also seen probably a thousand other movies. And yeah, some of them were shit, but a lot of them were amazing, and I don't regret a single one. Okay, maybe one. Tenet! Now obviously there are way more important things in life than what movies and TV shows you watch, but in my experience, your viewing habits can easily bleed into the rest of your life. I rediscovered Dragon Ball when I was about 16. And watching Goku and Vegeta constantly push their limits and overcome massive obstacles to get stronger legitimately motivated me to work harder in my own life. I mean, look at this shit. He's literally doing 10,000 push-ups under 100 times gravity with one arm. Fictional warrior, alien, monkey men or not. That shit is inspiring and it made me want to do better. That was the first time I watched it. It's been eight years since then and I've rewatched this show a bunch of times chasing that same feeling. And yeah, maybe I did a couple extra push-ups when someone would go Super Saiyan for the first time, but more often than not, this would be my day. I'd go to work and make some sandwiches, or if I was bouncing, I'd stand there like a fucking jackass. Then I'd come home and waste all my free time with my ass firmly planted on the couch, only getting up to eat or use the bathroom, and before I know it, it's 2 a.m. and I'm watching Gohan fight Cell for the fifth time with 30 dishes on the table and chip crumbs on my shirt, desperately seeking an escape from reality. Every single day was basically the same old shit. I needed a change in my life, and I couldn't even change the channel. I don't know why I said that. I don't have cable. I, I watched it online. It, I, I just thought it sounded cool. I, I'm sorry. Don't judge me. So of course I'm exaggerating a bit for dramatic effect. You know, I didn't actually just watch Dragon Ball all day. I watched DBZ too. And maybe I'm looking too deep into this, which I tend to do. But for me, a more satisfying life begins with the small things. You know, if you're stuck into the same movies and TV shows, and you're probably listening to the same music, eating the same food, hanging out with the same people, doing the same old shit, day in and day out, refusing to take a risk and try something new. And as dumb as this might sound, watching a new movie or TV show is a risk. Admittedly a small risk, but it's still a risk because you don't know if you're going to enjoy it or not. So yeah, it's easy to give in and watch something you already love because you know you won't be disappointed. But how did you discover the things you do love in the first place? By taking a risk. Nearly everything in my life that I value came to me because I took a risk. I've been listening to rap since I was four years old. Make of that what you will. And I've been rapping myself for about 11 years now and battling on and off for the last five. Now I've had a complicated relationship with it, but without it, I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't have met some amazing people and I wouldn't be nearly as creative or confident. You know, putting out a song, getting up on stage or stepping in the ring and having people respond positively to something that I put my heart and soul into made me feel like I had value, like my worthless ass actually had something to offer the world. It didn't come without its ups and downs. When I started out, I didn't know how to keep rhythm. My first year rapping, I literally sold mixtapes to people that were 80% off beat. When I realized this, I felt like shit. I felt awful and I wanted to quit so bad. But hip hop never taught me to be a quitter. So I kept at it. I kept writing and putting out songs and performing them, even though I was scared shitless. And eventually, I went from rapping off beat to the opposite. I bury myself my work so I can forget that I hate my life. I was in debt, but I paid the price. Tinfo, my mental got cleaned out, so I got my shit right now reinvented. But I still want you to send your Venmo handle, cause see, I'm requesting for you to finally pay me back for my fucking time investment. And then there's battle rap, 
which I was also nervous to start doing. And honestly, a lot of battle rap for me has just been a bunch of stressful bullshit. But when I'm in that ring, all that shit goes away. And I got one question. Who in the fucking hell do you think you yelling to? <laughs> no, one, no one listens when you spit, because you don't compel them to. They just stand there with their phones on the side, scrolling like Zelda 2. <laughs> <laughs> That shit right there is like a drug, man. Like, I get hyped and they get hyped and I get even more hyped because they're hype and it's like, I am the hype! But see, if I gave into my fear and never even tried it, I would have deprived myself of one of the best feelings in the entire world. And it's the same thing with filmmaking. A couple years ago, I didn't know how to use a camera, how to edit videos. Cut. And my confidence in my writing and performing was at an all-time low. But I always loved movies and TV, so I took a chance on a two-year video production program. And at first, I was tripping about how to shoot a basic-ass minute-long scene. Oh god, what do I do? Where do I put the camera? What, what goes in frame? Uh, fuck action! Wait, cut, cut, cut! Why is the lens wet? Oh, I just my tears. Okay, right, keep going. But I've been picking these skills up probably quicker than anything else in my life, and now I'm confident enough to write, direct, edit, and act in my own short films, and I feel like they're getting pretty good. But either way, making those movies is some of the most fun I've ever had, and it's completely brought back my confidence and creative passion. He's, single. He's like, Hi. in the bucket! <laughs> Around that time is also when I started this YouTube channel, and as you can imagine, I had a lot of reservations going in. You know, I thought, I'm not interesting, I'm not smart, I'm not funny, like, why the fuck would anyone want to watch this shit? And I still get nervous to hit upload, but here we are, 20 plus videos deep, and we just passed 100 subscribers. That's over 100 people who like my stupid ass videos enough to want to see more of them. And that's really cool to me, because I started off thinking that not a single person was going to care. So I want to thank every single one of you. All my friends and family who support, all the people I've never even met before who comment that they enjoy my videos and I'm underrated. Everyone went on YouTube and searched, why the fuck does everyone keep telling me to watch BoJack Horseman? And gave me a random ass video with like 6,000 views. Thank you, like, for real, this, this is, um, what was the point of this video? Right, right, w w watching, watching new things. Okay, um, look, chances are you don't take film and TV as seriously as I do, nor should you, but I really believe that your viewing habits can impact the rest of your life. And even if I'm wrong, at the very least, it can't hurt to broaden your horizons. I'm not telling you to never watch The Office again. I'm sure it's not gonna watch The Godfather and Bojack Horseman again, but a bit more often, I encourage you to take a chance on something you've never seen before. Check out a genre you don't normally explore. Watch an indie movie. Watch that German film your friend ripped for you on a- I recommend a few on Netflix. I pay for everything I watch, I, I swear. On the King James Bible. LeBron James. But seriously, watch the things on your list that you've been getting around to for the last five years. You might not love them all, you might even hate some of them, but who knows? One of them might just become your godfather or your Bojack Horseman, and trust me, that's worth it. So you're telling me that you don't want to watch The Godfather, huh? Okay, well, uh, you can just go fuck yourself then. <laughs>